Welcome back. It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Now, Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, has declared his intention to run for the office of the President. Professor Shibajo from Ogun State seeks to succeed his principal, President Mohamed Buhari, whose second term in office ends in May 2023. In his declaration speech posted on his social media handles, Oshibajo said he has, in the past seven years as vice president, traversed every part of the country, meeting Nigerians of every Kaida, class, tribe, and walks of life, both young and old. The vice president will challenge for the ticket of the ruling party, the APC, with others who have declared their intentions, including ex Lega state governor, Bola Tinubu, and transportation minister, Rotimi Amechin. Well, let's take the clip of his declaration and we'll come back and introduce our guests. Stay with us. Formally declaring my intention to run for the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on the platform of our great party, the All Progressives Congress. If by the grace of God and the will of the people I am given the opportunity, then I believe that first we must complete what we have started radically transforming our security and intelligence architecture, completing the reform of our justice system, focusing on adequate remuneration and welfare of judicial personnel, and ensuring justice for all and the observance of the rule of law, rapidly advancing our infrastructure development, especially power, roads, railways, and broadband connectivity providing an excellent environment for businesses to thrive, taking the agricultural revolution to the next step, especially mechanization and developing the farm to table value chain, making sure that the government, its agencies and regulators serve the business community, creating a tech economy that will provide jobs for millions of young Nigerians enhancing our social investment program to a full-scale social welfare program, completing the promise of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty within this decade, completing the task of ensuring that all Nigerians, male and female, attend school, reforming our educational system for relevance to the challenges of this century, completing the task of universal health coverage for all, and strengthening the capacity of states and local governments to deliver on their respective mandates. All right, welcome back there. That uh, was uh, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, uh, declaring his intention to run for the office of the President in come 2023. Uh, joining us now to look at all uh, that has played out since um, his declaration and all of um, the reactions and the promises that he has made, we have uh, Mohammed Abdullahi, a public affairs analyst, uh, joining us. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for joining us this time around. Uh, thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. All right, uh, let's uh, just um, start uh, with um, the, pres uh, the vice president's declaration. You know, um, it was uh, to be expected because before now, there have been talks uh, concerning uh, him uh, running for the president, uh, even though he did not uh, physically or verbally mention that there were support groups who had uh, pushed uh, his ambition forward ahead of him. But right now, he has made his declaration, and um, it has... Uh, elicited a whole lot of reactions from Nigerians, both uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, top amongst that is, uh, you know, the comment uh, from the former governor of Lagos State, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, where he went and said that uh, he uh, has no uh, son, uh, you know, uh, uh, eligible to contest. Uh, he said it. I'm just trying to paraphrase what he said. But a lot of people believe that uh, his comment yesterday has seemingly uh, drawn the battle line between him, uh, that's uh, the vice president and uh, the for, former Lagos governor. What are your thoughts, really? Uh, yeah, um, thank you. The, the thing is, uh, the vice president, like every other Nigerian, is actually very eligible to put his name or put himself forward, apologies, to say he's uh, contesting for the elections. Uh, but again, if you look at the circumstances that we have, that we find ourselves in Nigeria, 
particularly with the issues of Godfatherism, then you also want to question why at this point in time, his principal, whether we like it or not, Tinubu is his principal from his antecedent, from being the Attorney General of Lagos, to even Tinubu's personal lawyers in, uh, in prosecuting so many cases. You know, if you recall, he was actually the lead counsel for Tinubu when uh, Ribadu, the first uh, chairman of the EFCC then wanted to prosecute Tinubu. He was actually the, late the lead counsel that uh, was defending the case. He was, also, he was also the lead counsel for Tinubu during his trial at the CC CCB. He was also the lead counsel when the late uh, luminary genius, uh, Gani Faremi, like I like to refer to him, uh, was um, accusing Tinubu of, uh, of, of, of certificate forgery, the Toronto scandal, if you remember. You know, so in my, in my opinion, I might be right or wrong, uh, Vice President Yemi Osibado is one individual in Nigeria that knows a whole lot more about uh, Tinubu than any other Nigerian. Yes, I, I, I'm telling you this. I might be right and I might be wrong. But, you know, as a lawyer who's had a whole lot of closed cases, being the late counsel for uh, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, He's got a whole lot of... Because you can't lie to your lawyers, I'm telling you. You can lie to anybody, but you can't even lie to your lawyer because they need all the truth in the world so that they know how to defend your case. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, you had one, two, three, four, or even more cases, serious cases where he's defended Tinubu, and he's won. You understand? So I think it is in that respect that people will see him as a betrayer because he, he's got a whole lot of the secret about... Mr. Tinubu, you understand? Uh, Ahmed Bola Tinubu. So I, I'm sure he's, he's, he's part of what is a, a, a kind of confidence for him to say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm competent. This guy's got nothing against me. Yes, I, 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 to, 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 to hand me down. So I'm, I'm competent and I've been in the corridors. Of, let me tell you, power is very, very intoxicating. You understand? So being in the corridors of power for seven years as the vice president, he's seen it all, even though he's not in charge. But he's, like he mentioned in his declaration speech, he's represented Nigeria in international committees. He's been to almost all the part, uh, 77, uh, 774 local governments in Nigeria. He's seen it all. So why not take the mantle? You understand? But on the other way, like I mentioned earlier, some people are seeing it uh, from, the, from, from the side that because he's worked so closely with Tinubu, his boss, if you want to call it, if you want to call him that, call it that way. And so, yeah, he's, 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 it seems like a betrayal to say when his boss wants to contest. And this is the first time that Tinubu is saying he wants to contest for president after leaving office as governor for more than, I think, about 20 years or more. Uh, or sorry, about 16 or 17 years or more, you know? So why will you now contest against your boss? So it's a, it's a battle line. I wouldn't lie to you. And people who are, who are saying it's going to be settled after the primaries, I just laugh. I tell you, even after the primaries, the war is just beginning. Because whoever wins the primaries, whether it's Ms. Tinubu or Osimbajo, the war is just beginning. If it's Tinubu, he, I can tell you he will never trust Osimbajo for anything. He might just pretend. But and if it's the other way around too, uh, your guess is as good as mine. So it, it, it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, uh, scenario uh, in uh, in some in some months to come also when the primaries are here okay so but, but uh, let's also look at some other arguments that's been put out here uh the fact that some people are saying constitutionally the vice president acts on the dictate of his boss and so he should not be blamed for i mean taking this particular action at the end of the day uh for instance now uh, you have the vice president in his speech. He talked about continuity with the Buhari's policy, this administration, where he is part of. We also understand the fact that he's been the chairman of the economic, uh, you know, economic team of the country. And if you look at the economy right now, uh, we we're really going down. We're not going forward. And so there's, there's a lot of it. Some people say, if you haven't made any impact being part of this government then what is even the yardstick that you would even do better? So um, how do you react to this? Uh, now, 
it is important that we know that um, as the vice president, uh, Yemi Osimbajo has very little to do. His job is that of subordination. Whatever his boss assigns him to do is what he will do. Forget the fact that he's the head of the economic committee, uh, the committee of the government, and uh, some, sometimes when uh, President Buhari is leaving the country, occasionally hands over to him. But it still boils down <clears throat> uh, to what it is, uh, what, what is the objective of, of President Buhari and what Mr. Buhari, uh, President Buhari, allows him as the vice president to do. I tell you uh, that as, as a person, Yemi Osibajo has displayed a whole lot of uh, brilliance. You understand? You remember, you recall that uh, a certain time when he was even uh, given the mantle of leadership, I mean, handed over to by the president while living in the country. He swiftly sacked the DSS um, DG. You understand? Within those uh, few moments and few times he's got power, he's acted a whole lot. But like I mentioned earlier, there is a limit to what he can do. Uh, but I also agree, you understand? If things are not going well, as a person or for, as a professional that he is, in trying to maintain his own integrity, in trying to maintain his own competence uh, uh, whatsoever, he, uh, some of the argument is that he should, be able, he, he should be able to say, okay, if this is not done the, the right way, for instance, in so many cases where the, the, the federal government have refused to obey court orders, and as a senior advocate of, uh, of Nigeria, a, 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 a competent uh, barrister himself, he is supposed to say, if you are not doing this way, probably he might resign. But how many political office holders in Nigeria uh, take, take, take that route? Uh, if not known, it's almost non-existent. You understand? The probability is very, very low. So um, in terms of his competence, I don't really think we can judge him. That, that's my opinion anyway. I don't really think we can judge him based on his contribution to this government. Because like I mentioned earlier, he is a subordinate. You understand? But his only, his only um, what is it called, shortcoming is if things are not going wrong, if, some, if things are not going right, that what you feel should be, you will have the opportunity to resign and state your case. You understand? I think about, but in our, in our, in our, in our, current, in our kind of country, that is a very rare case. So um, uh, it's a very rare case. All right, Mohammed, let's talk about some other reactions that have trailed this development. Uh, uh, you know, we read uh, the dailies this morning and uh, it, they were all awash which on the president or uh, the VPs and declaration. Uh, the Daily Independent uh, aptly put it this way, VP on Shiba Jobola, Tenable's loyalist draw battle line. But I want you to react to this particular uh, rider that followed that uh, caption. VP is a pawn on the chessboard of some game masters. That's uh, the Lagos APC. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's, 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 it's funny and, and, uh, and, um, and very serious at the same time. You know, in my earlier analysis, I said he's got a whole lot about Mr. Tinubu, even that no one I feel, in my own opinion, whether in APC or outside APC, or in Mr. Tinubu, even in Mr. Tinubu's private life, can get a hold on. Because as a lead counsel, you have to tell your, your lawyer the whole truth about cases. That is one. And again, you've seen the moves, particularly from many of the Southwest governors. Well, I, I can categorically say, for instance, a Kitty governor, uh, my state governor on those state. These are people who are also prodigies of Bola uh, Ahmed uh, But they've shown, uh, whether through their actions, whether through their speeches and their inactions, that they are not really in support of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And these are uh, the people that, uh, at this early stage, I would say are canvassing that support. Even if there are fillers somewhere that uh, um, the existing governor um, is also not in their ambition to declare. But these are some of the, uh, what is it called? These are some of the people that I think are backing. And definitely Mr. Bab uh, Ojodu, the, the, the political advisor to the vice president, who was once also, uh, if you won't say a prodigy, but a partner of uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu in the struggle for democracy in Nigeria. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really a tough game. And if you see, it, uh, before his declaration, there were 10 governors that attended his, his private meeting. You understand? Even though Lagos State governor was also there, but you know, definitely, 
uh, your guest as good as mine to say definitely he will be back in uh, Ahmed Bolatin, but he was there for the vice president, probably as a mark of respect. And uh, some of other governors, for instance, Zulu of um, of uh, Governor Zulu, Professor Zulu of uh, Bono. You see, these are called uh, Buharists. You see, he wasn't at the meeting with uh, with with Abola So these are some of the feelings that gives you the 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 the, the incline that probably Mr. President himself. I mean, President Buhari is the one backing the vice president. It's but the former Lagos State Governor also like had a meeting. Mohammed, let me just get the word in edgewise. Yeah. The former Lagos State Governor mm -hmm. also had a meeting with um, the governor uh, uh, shortly after the VP's declaration. What does all of this say? Yes. Uh, yeah. The, 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 sorry, I didn't get you. Sorry. The former Lagos State Governor, that's um, Senator Tinubu, also had a meeting with the governors uh, just um, after mm -hmm. the VP's declaration. What does all of this uh, yes. really tell? Yes. Yes. Um, if, you, if you listen to him very well, he was, uh, he was talking about collaboration and partnership and actually officially letting the governors know that he will be contesting for the position of president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and is canvassing for their support. You will see the, the, the good thing for Tinubu that I feel, uh, if there is primaries, because you never can rule out consensus, uh, consensus candidates at the APC. You see their recent convention, most of the positions, including that of the chairmanship, was by consensus. So. If there are uh, regulated primaries, whether it be direct primaries or indirect primaries, Mr. Tinubu, Ahmed Bola Tinubu has a little edge, I would say, because he's got more support from the North. Whether I want to agree to that or not. You see, uh, wherever you find Ahmed Bola Tinubu, for instance, you find Governor uh, Ganduje. There are feelers that, Governor Ganduje of Kano, there are feelers that he wants to become the vice president. So he, he's really pulling up big, and you know, Kano is one of the big states where you have a whole lot of votes. You understand? So if you have Ganduje, you have the, the Kebi state governor, uh, definitely, and definitely, uh, and there are rumors everywhere, even with the actions of the former uh, uh, APC caretaker committee chairman, I mean, the governor of Yobe state, Memala Buni, he's also a strong supporter with his, with his action and inaction, a strong supporter of Ahmed Bola Tinubu, and so many other northern governors like that who constitute the majority of, uh, of, of, of governors, I mean, even in terms of population in Nigeria. So if there is primaries, I am feeling that Ahmed Bola Tinubu has a, has a better chance. But if they go by consensus, if they go by consensus wanting to impose, uh, what's it called, a candidate on the party, it, it is possible that the vice president, Yemi Osibajo, but the APC governors, um, they have allayed fears over consensus and candidacy. It was actually part of um, uh, what they said at the meeting yesterday. Mm. Yes, but well, this is politics. They can't come out their face to tell you what they are planning. I tell you, it's very, very possible. Today, maybe two, four, five years ago, let's say four, five years ago, in 2019 or in 2018 or 2017, if you tell anyone that uh, Vice President uh, Oyi or, or Simbajo will be contesting, uh, uh, declaring for president while he's a benefactor or beneficiary, if anyone you want to use. Uh, Ahmed Bola Tinubu has signified interest to the president. Uh, probably most people will argue with you. Even myself, I will argue with you. But that's politics. And um, power changes people. You understand? Being in the corridor of power, you feel, OK, if I am this, why can't I grab that? If I am that, why can't I grab this? You understand? So it's very possible. And everybody is seeing this. Whether it's the chances are slim, or the probability is high. Everybody is seeing that there is a chance. So whether for Ahmed Bola Tinubu or the vice president, and not even, let's not even discountenance other contestants like Amechi, who has also a strong hold. You remember some two months back, he was, um, he, he, he was actually uh, Toban, uh, the trusted one. That's the, uh, I've forgotten the word now in Hausa, but that's what it means. The trusted one of the Casina Emirate. You understand? So you can't really discountenance all these people. They might not pull heavyweight, but they might, uh, what is it called? They might succeed in pulling out votes from all the major contestants. And I must tell you, uh, if I must add, you see the PDP, if they put their house in order, whether Ahmed Bonatini who wins the primaries for APC, or Vice President Yemi Osimbajo wins the primaries for APC, the PDP has a better chance to win the general election. Because whether, I, whether you like it or not, sir, I am telling you, the primaries will resonate into a whole lot of acrimony. I'm telling you, no, irrespective of who, who, whosoever wins. 
So the, the, the cost is clearer for the opposition if they put their house in order to win the general election. So you, you see the, um, I mean, the declaration of uh, the vice president causing any confusion in the APC. Do you think this is going to cause uh, any kind of ripple in the party? It is going. It is going to. It is going to cause. Uh, there, there is no doubt about it. It's going to cause a whole. Not even. A, not even confusion, but acrimony. Like I said, uh, you had the first uh, um, 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 response of Ahmed Bonatinu yesterday when he was asked that uh, his son has just declared for, for for president. And what he said that he said he he's got no son that is old enough uh, to declare for such uh, uh, position. So you understand. So and if you look at it. For how, when was the last time you saw Vice President Yemi Osibajo and Ahmed Wola Tinubu together at a particular social event or even at private event? You understand? Because when the feelers began to occur or began to come up that the Vice President would definitely contest, he's got a whole lot of backers across the country. And you see, when it, it, it became clearer that, okay, this man definitely wants to contest. So you see, they started avoiding themselves. I can't remember the last time I found them together at any social event, whether politically, whether socially, whether privately. That is a criminal in itself. Because in, in recent times, they used to be together. When the president, when the vice president is in Lagos, definitely you visit uh, the Lion of Babylon, you know? But it's, it's not like that. And that is the beginning of a criminal. People, both parties will begin to sit down and dissect who is for me and who is, who is, who is against me. You understand? If you if you probably come to Lagos, for instance, Mr. Tinubu definitely will still have more aid because most of the political uh, juggernauts here are his boys, are his benefactors, and so on and so forth. Yeah. But elsewhere also, uh, probably around the country, uh, the vice president must have had his influence. If you if you see in recent times, he's been going to everywhere. He's in fact, you just probably when you are having your naming ceremony, if you invite him, he will come because that is part of the strategy that is part of what he needs to garner more support to be there at the local level to say guys i am ready come vote for me all right uh, let's still talk about um the what's ahead uh you know for the VP uh, as he has uh, made his intention known because uh, aside from um, the former Lagos State Governor, he also will be contending the ticket uh, with the Minister of Transportation, uh, Roti Miyamichu, who also declared before a mammoth crowd in Port Harcourt over the weekend. But right now, you know, a lot of reactions have showed the VP's uh, declaration. Uh, although he said he was going to uh, build on what uh, uh, his principal, uh, his principal's legacy, uh, that's uh, uh, President Mohammed Buhari, what is he going? What do you think he uh, can bring to the table? What can he do differently this time around? Because if he's going to ride on the wings of um, the for, uh, the president uh, right now, um, he might not really uh, be uh, favoring uh, speaking uh, favorably. You know, when my dreams are because uh, the reactions have actually you know condemned uh, uh, that particular statement that he made. Um, thank you for that question. But you know, as a subordinate, you can't discountenance your boss. It's, 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 just, it's just a normal rule. Whether right or wrong, since that person is your boss, you must acknowledge him or her, and then try to make them feel fine, whether they are, they are on the right path or, or not. Uh, but, but, but having said that, you see, we, uh, we, we must be very factual with ourselves as Nigerians. In our country, how many times has manifestos won people election? Uh, my brother, how many times? I look at the debate in Lagos gubernatorial, uh, for instance, I look at the, the debate in Lagos gubernatorial uh, elections in, in recent years. The most brilliant gentleman that has been, you know, he speaks very well, he's got articulated plans to take Lagos to the next level, if I may use that word. Uh, one Baba Tunde, something, I've forgotten his second name, you know? But it's, 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 never come, it's never come second or third even on the, on, 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 on the election day. You understand? So it is not about being, uh, it's, not, it's not about your oratory. It's not about what you lay down to achieve or how you want to achieve them. I tell you, our system is built in a way where these things do not count. I must be very factual with you. These things do not count. You understand? So what people see, what people look at first is probably 
who is this person? Who, where is he coming from? And how best probably can he influence the election? How, if I'm voting for him or her? There are so many statements out there. If I vote for a Shawere, for instance, am I not wasting my vote? That was what the late Ghani also, 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 also was it called, also, also faced while he was trying to contest for the presidency. Ah, uh -huh. Ghani Faremi is, is under the platform ADC or so. Uh, uh, when I vote for him, I think I'm, 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 I'm just wasting my vote. You understand? So most importantly, the party matters. Yeah. And, and at this moment, the two dominant parties is the APC and the PDP. If you are not part of these parties, the chances that you are going to lose the general election is more than 70 to 80 percent. And that's a high percentage. You understand? So uh, we, we vote so much along party lines. You understand? Uh, and, and it's not good for democracy because, in fact, there should be, I think, the, the new electoral bill uh, is providing, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is providing um, opportunity for individuals to, to, to contest elections as individuals without party affiliations. But I can tell you how many what how many individuals can win elections in such in, in such way in such circumstances right, in our country. So it is uh, it is uh, the, 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 the our our we are so much affiliated to parties. We are not talking about Mohammed Abdullahi. What, uh, we have to let you yeah, go they, now. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for being part of the show this morning, Mohammed Abdullahi. He is a public affairs analyst. And we have been looking at the declaration of the Vice President, Professor Yemi Osibajo, uh, joining the race for 2023 presidential race. And first, he has to win the presidential ticket for the APC. And let's see how all of that pans out as we progress. All right, I will take a quick break right now. And um, Nigerians have been leaving in the um quoted and quote perpetual darkness for the past uh, few days are uh, all in the wake of um, the national greed collapsing again, you know, also so closely in just one month. Now, we'll be talking about all of that and, and the implication and uh, also preferring solutions to that in a moment to join us again.